the target for 2020, which is 3,827, which is an average of 20 first uh, countries in this uh, index. And so on, number of graduate students as a percentage of total student body, it was 6%, gone to today 14%, and the target is higher than this, 40. Uh, publication in scientific is also low, citation per paper is low, and so on. So there is a challenge here. This is for the Global Innovation Index. I think it is that in 2016, Oman was ranked 73 out of 128. It has moved since then, and I don't know why, back due to low performance of, on innovation outputs in the KPIs. Uh, maybe the criteria has changed, maybe something, but it's. Uh, in, I hope it will uh, it will be in the ascending mode. Uh, you can see the gap in, in this institution, they did very well. In the human capital R&D, okay. Infrastructure is okay, but it was minus three in one year. Uh, market sophistication, uh, 72, 108 in 2015, and so on. So there is again, for the global competitiveness or global innovation index, there is room to improve. Where is the problem? We have an industry, we have academia, we have research institutes, and we have industry or startups. The gap actually, as I see it, as everybody sees, is the b between the industry and academia. There is no communication between the two. The ac academia doesn't know what the industry needs. The industry doesn't know, or if they know, they don't have the trust in the, in the researchers or in the faculty. So there is a, a knowledge gap between the two. Now, there's different models. I don't want to go all, on, you know, for all of them. The, I will give one uh, example of Austrian Institute of Technology uh, to just to fill that gap. The, 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 the model they adopted was it's public-private participation, PPP. The 49.5 for the federation, the government, and the federal ministry for transport, 50 point something. This is industries, sorry, 49.5, and this is the government, 50%. The way they do it is that there are emerging technologies. There are challenges for the industry. They need innovation, they, know they need invention, they need innovation, they need research. In between, we c they create scientific methods, development tools, research infrastructure structure and technologies. They enable solutions. How? By contract research, licensing of intellectual property, and spin-off companies. So it, it comes from applied research, it goes to already an innovation and spin-off companies. So what needs to be done in Oman? We have oil and gas dominated economy now. We have time resources, process, and champion, and vehicle. There should be a transition phase between oil and gas dominated economy to knowledge-based dominated economy in the future. But this needs time. This needs resources. This needs a process. This needs a champion and a vehicle. 
My focus today will be how to do this model or how to develop this model. This is just a high level roadmap, time now, uh, resources, it's PPP, public private participation model. The vehicle, as I see it, the oil and gas industry, it's, and I will give the reasons. To me, the champion will be PDO. Champion is not somebody who's taking the whole burden of the cost, but to champion this process. And I will give the reasons also why. The process is bringing, uh, bridging the gap between academia and industry. That's the process. Now, the vehicle we have, as I said, oil and gas do dominated economy now. We want to reach to knowledge-based dominated economy in the future. I believe oil and gas should be, in, uh, oil and gas industry should be the vehicle because in oil and gas, they have a, a good infrastructure, they have good research and development, and they have technologies that they keep adding to the, to the sector. From these, as examples, environmental technology, smart field technology, renewable energy technology, water treatment technology. All of the four that I am proposing are, will be a spin-off from the oil and gas sector. Yeah, it is, they do something for oil and gas, but there are some spin-off, some innovation that could come out of it, not only for oil and gas. Why oil and gas industry is the vehicle? Uh, this Raul highlighted uh, last time, and I think some of the points he raised is here. We have a strong supply. 1980s, there was a billion barrels of oil estimated. Today, we have produced these billion barrels. We have 150 years of oil production at today's demand. 32,000 trillion cubic feet of ultimate gas recovery, only eight are produced. We have 200 years of gas production at today's demand. These are not my numbers. Total supply is 91 million barrels a day now, and is anticipated to have to be one, 104, 105. This is the forecast by 2040. There will be strong demand. Again, 20% of world population used 80% of energy today. Imagine the demand expansion with more energy access, urbanization, and modernization. World population is 7.6 billion today, 9.6 in 2050. Typical fall decline at 5% per animal. You need, there will be a demand. So the demand of, no, of oil and gas will continue. Whether you have, when you have an energy mix, gas especially will become, some forecasters say, 70%. So there will be a demand. Population is increasing need is increasing. What is needing more, and what I thought about it deeply, is the, uh, the artificial intelligence, the cloud, uh, all of these coming, the smart cities, uh, the internet of today, uh, also are becoming on demand. So this will increase even the number of energy required and this we have to be aware. So uh, for the oil and gas, we have to improve, improve the production, the processing, and the refining. We also have to increase the energy to meet the demand. I don't know if it's understood. Yes. 
So, oil and gas industry is the vehicle. Why? There is a local strength. Uh, we need to sustain production. Oil and gas industry has developed human resources already and infrastructure capacity. Oil and gas technologies are easily transferable to other applications. As I mentioned, what is developed as a technology for the oil fields, oil wells, is also can be used for other technologies in life. Innovation is a daily business in Oman oil and gas company. They have to keep on you know, inventing, innovating, to have the sustainability of the production. Oman oil and gas fields are excellent laboratories. This is by itself a good tool for doing research and development. So I consider it as a win-win partnership with academic institutions, both winning. This is one example of water treatment technology. Uh, now we have too little water, but too much water coming out from the oil well. For every barrel, I understand there are nine or 10 barrels of water. How do we use this in desalination, in improving the quality of water that's coming from? There is a, there is a project now and needs more research, more development, and can be used for other places, not only for oil. So this is a good application of something that the uh, petroleum and gas sector is doing for the sake of getting more out of oil fields, getting more oil. And then you have water. Another example is renewable energy technology. Uh, this is Miraya, and I visited the place. Uh, this is a, a good project meant to, to uh, enhance oil recovery and using the technique of steam, which is, not, uh, which is from solar, directly seeded from solar, and not using gas. Uh, this can be used, or there could be a spin-off of this technology for other applications. For instance, these, these solar parks in Minal Pahel, BDO, is one example. Eco House, which the Research Council has started, could be another example. And I think with a project like this glass point project, there could be so many applications if uh, some development and innovation in this area is established. Glass point could benefit the SMEs in Oman, uh, some companies to be formed, and I think they started this process. Smart fields. Uh, this is uh, a daily work and a daily development with the petroleum and gas sector. And I, I also think that in the, uh, in the smart field technology, so many other spin-off companies can be used, using that, providing smart solution, even providing in the smart city. So why PDO is suggested as a champion? Uh, petroleum development Oman, given its maturity, financial standing, is, I think, uniquely positioned to drive change and economic diversification. It's leading the world in application of EOR technologies. From all of this, I would say 
the change, the movement, the transition zone to a knowledge-based economy from oil and gas, which will remain with us for some time, should, be, should have a champion. You cannot depend on always an income uh, from the government or, you know, to, to support you. There has to be somebody who will champion it and who will benefit also from it. He's not doing it as a charity. He's doing it because he needs it. So anything out of a need will always be successful. Here is the process. And here is what I am suggesting to you. We have oil and gas companies and we have we are proposing an applied research center. To me, Innovation Park mascot could be the best, you know, suitable host unit for this applied research. Call it whatever you want. But it, what it's doing, it's doing applied research. With partnering with internationally renowned institution, it can be developed, and I have seen a lot of models working. We cannot wait to build capacity uh, from education. We have to start somewhere, and partnering internationally renowned institution will help the process, will expedite the process. So I think it's a good idea to, have to gain the exper experience from all these international partners. That doesn't mean we are also leaving the academic research institutions. No, we have. Somebody will, might ask the question, why do you do applied research? You can give to Sultan Qaboos University. You can fund something. It doesn't work that way. The idea is to have a one umbrella unit that takes care of applied research because you will have researcher A asking for a lab that costs maybe 500,000, 100,000, 1 million sometimes for a project. That equipment needs to be maintained. It needs to be managed. The process has to be managed also. I, 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 I cannot see how it can be sustained. When you have one unit of applied research, and I will explain later, taking care of the management, the maintenance of the equipment, and cutting on the duplication of these equipments, to me, and I have seen it, it works very well for the industry and for the academia. In academia, you can have research centers of excellence in any area. You can start your basic research. It's, uh, you can have a chair professor in something, in economics, in IT, in artificial intelligence, and, and you can do very well because a chair can also educate and you can have some research, uh, research topics that can be managed. So from this, you will have spin-off business and inshallah job creation. Okay, so this is more of this part uh, made in a bit of details. We have the oil and gas technical channel, let's say PDO or any company, Shell, they have a, a challenge. They say, okay, we have a challenge, we have a problem here, can you solve it? This is applied research. This is contract research also called. So the Applied Research Center has local researchers. They also deal with academic and industry. They have international partners. They have central labs to be used again and again and to be used for future, for future research and development with any uh, institution. 
we have dedicated researchers and technicians hosted in, uh, in Innovation Park mascot. I think this is a good way of doing applied research under one umbrella. So the challenge gone through the applied research, they could find some solution, innovations, inventions, and then they go to an office. This is the office now of intellectual property management. Patent evaluation, patent disclosure, patent filing, legal support. This is very important. You know, during the, this process, the, I think for Oman, it is the patent and the intellectual property is the wealth of the country for the future. It should not be ignored. It is very important. You, you saw the number of patents that we have. It's very s small number. It creates knowledge, it creates skill, and it creates revenue also for the country. So you have a patent, and then you register the patent. You have the incubation support. This cannot be the whole ecosystem cannot be done in one department or one center. It has to be done under one umbrella, under a continuous research and innovation support. So then if, if it is successful in the incubation period, it spin off. What does it create? Create jobs and revenue for the country. Is it clear? Yes. This is just uh, an explanation of what I mentioned before. The process needs to be supported by a shared vision. This vision should not be only for the applied research, innovation park mascot, PDO. Everybody should be included. There should be coherent policies. There should be a good education. There should be a good research and development and knowledge transfer. Knowledge transfer can be done by so many methods. Uh, will, will, uh, pro products and services, knowledge management, all of these are all shared between the different stakeholders. The oil and gas, for to conclude, the oil and gas dominated economy, we, we are suggesting now these four technologies to be the starting point. The oil and gas industry will, will be the vehicle and the knowledge based dominated economy will create jobs and economic diversification. That's it, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sheikh. No, you're not off the hook yet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a very, very interesting lecture, a very interesting talk, and a very interesting overview of a possible model that will get us to a knowledge-based economy. I have to say, personally, I saw many buzzwords for me, um, education, incubation, um, IP, very, very important, knowledge transfer. So lots of things that I think are, are critical if we are going to move towards um, getting to that desired state of um, knowledge-based economy. So thank you very much for that. I'll open up uh, the floor for questions. So any questions, um, I think uh, Sheikh is willing to take questions in English or Arabic. So please feel free to take questions. And I think Penkaj that we've got here. Doctor, it was a very insightful um, um, talk, um, very enlightening. You touched on a very, you touched on a very relevant point about the disconnect between academia and industry, or academia 
and applied research. How can we go about um, bridging this, this gap or this so-called distance that is there? Why is it that academia uh, are into their own and industry, we as industry, are completely disaligned with academic um, progress? How can, we, how can we bridge that? One method, one... Yeah, one way I explained here. In the academic, uh, my, my experience always with academia, you have, you know, colleges, you have departments, you have distinguished researchers, and they would like to do something. They would like to do some research. Again, what I observed is that most of the, and there is no insult, I am an academician, so don't, don't worry about that. Most of the research is mostly for promotion. It has no impact, no value added, no, nothing to the economy. Except at Muscat and University, obviously. Well, <laughs> qualify that. Yeah, I, I, I said you are newborn there, Mr. <laughs> you are still new. So I think that is, uh, this is a problem. Again, if you encourage researchers to come within an institute, they will come and they will contribute to the applied research because there will be an incentive for them, a financial incentive for them to come. There will be another indirect incentive or direct. There will be a patent. And I recommend even for promotion for the faculty in any university to put not only paper publication, but also patent registration. It is very important for them to have. This is, this is the impact. Ranking of universities has no impact. Me, Oman here, we would like to see a direct impact to the, to the economy. And then I would say this university is successful. Thank you very much. Very, very wise words, absolutely. I'll take a question from John there at the back. Oh, sorry. Hi. Um, so thank you very much, Dr. al Khattab, for your um, presentation. You. Very interesting. Thank you. Just two questions for you. So I'm a visitor to this country. I'm not an Amani myself. But yeah. um, uh, two questions. You, at the very beginning of your presentation, you talked about developing PhDs in that research resource. And in some instances, there's quite a steep upturn over yeah. a period. Yeah. So my first question is, how do you propose supporting that? So that's question number one. Question number two is about behavior. Because you talked a lot in your presentation about innovation and entrepreneurship, but everything about your presentation, to me, was risk averse. Yeah? Risk, risk? Risk averse. Risk against risk. risk. When, when, you're, when you're getting involved in entrepreneurship, innovation, you're taking risk on. In the UK or America, you call it risk on, risk off. Mm. So I'm thinking in terms of developing the economy, um, thinking about transformation, you need to drive change, you need to change behavior. So what do you do to, to address that? So those are my two, two questions. Um, uh, for changing behavior, I'm not a psychologist or a sociologist, but uh, the best thing at least from my experience, is that by doing the thing itself, uh, there is a research dis discipline, and there are so many protocols written, and you can write papers and get excited in different, uh, get cited in different uh, publications. That in itself is, I would say it's, uh, I consider it as a simple thing for so many researchers. If you want to get, if you want to have risk, if I understand you well, you need to have some kind of uh, uh, putting your hands, your brain, into something that is applied. You need to do that. In Oman, we still have a long way to go. But what I am presenting here is that there should be somebody, some 
someone, some unit, some company to champion the, 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 the process. And I, I, I say again that this is a good way, applied research is a good way of finding another basic research. So take anything, horizontal well drilling, drilling or any other problem in the gas and technology. I'm a geologist, I'm not a petroleum engineer, so I don't want to go into that part. Uh, so when you go and you focus on that subject, you will learn many things. And companies, smart companies, if they see you have an applied, really a product that they will use, but it is mi missing something else, they will tell you again, please, please do another R&D for this point. And this is how it is, it's con continuous. I don't know if I answered your question. Thank you, Dr. Al-Khattab, uh, for the valuable uh, topic and for University of Muscat also. Thank you very much. Actually, I did have a, a question. I, I want to share my experience about uh, generation of knowledge. Uh, actually, I did uh, or I bridged the gap between theory or between academia and practice in my doctor degree, where I selected a problem from workplace and I encourage all participants from uh, stakeholders and uh, decision maker in my organization to work in my research. So all of us together with the collaboration and I, both, I give them the ownership of that issue to study together to make a change and to improve the practice. So I believe uh, to generate knowledge from the action, from the collaboration action. Yes, I So agree. this very important um, uh, you know, issue, how to change the belief of others and how they to accept the uh, applied research through action research in yeah, the work. True. So I did that in okay, my work. Okay, that's yeah. very good. That very could much. be a good answer for you even. Yes, yeah. Thank you. I am to talk in Arabic. سياسة الدولة الآن تتجه إلى تقليل الاعتماد على النفط لذلك لا يمكن أن نبقى أن نعتبره هو المخطط الرئيسي لاقتصادنا صحيح. يمكن أن يستعمل النفط لخلق الإنيرجي والتصنيع في البلاد لكن لا نعتمد عليه في سياستنا الاقتصادية سنغافور ما عندها نفط لكن من أكثر الدول تقدم في الاقتصاد ولا تعتمد على النفط كشيء أساسي في حياتها صحيح وإحنا الآن نخطط على هذا الأساس هو تنويع مصادر الدخل تنويع مصادر الدخل يجب علينا أن لا نعتمد فيه على النفط كمخطط و و و هو هو اللي يخطط لنا المستقبل في في اقتصادنا وفي وفي حياتنا الاقتصادية لذلك يجب أن لا يكون هناك تركيز من الآن بالاعتماد على النفط لقدر ما هو التركيز على تنويع الاقتصاد واعتماد النفط كمصدر للطاقة وليس كمصدر للتخطيط أنا ما أدري شكرا على السؤال ما أدري إذا شرحت زين ولا لا أنا بإيجاز باختصار لم أقول إن النفط والغاز سيكون هو المخطط للاقتصاد أنا قلت إن النفط والغاز بيستمر لمدة طويلة أستاذنا العزيز سمي لي شركة أو في أي قطاع ممكن أن تتحمل التحول الاقتصاد إلى اقتصاد معرفي يعني أنا الذي أقوله أنه النفط والغاز طالما أنه فيه ديماند في المستقبل فهو مستمر النفط والغاز قطاع النفط والغاز محتاج إلى الانوفيشن المستمر لتقليل تكلفة الانتاج ولي يعني 
إيجاد مصادر أخرى خاصة في الصناعة التحويلية إذا أنا ما معتمد أنا ما أخذ الريفنيو من النفط والغاز وأحطه في شيء ثاني لتنويع اقتصادي ما أدري واضح ولا لا إيه؟ لا أنا أعتبره الفيكل الآن مثل ما قلت لك سمي لي شركات غير النفط والغاز القادرة على تنويع الاقتصاد سمي لي أستاذنا اي نعم هل هي ماتشور انف هل هي ناضجه فعلا وهل هي بامكان مش انا ما اتكلم عن سوشيال ريسبونسيبيلتي انا فاهم انا فاهم 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 لكن هذه البدايه اذا كان في عندك صناعه ناضجه وتحتاج الى بحث وتطوير في 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 توبكس معينه كان بها المركز الابحاث التطبيقيه هذا ممكن بفعل عمله والانتاج والسبين اوف كومبانيز اللي تطلع منه والانوفيشن والانفنشن وال ممكن يكون مصدر انه الناس تشوف انا دائما امن انه اذا تبغي شيء ناجح جربه لنفسك الاول وخذ المعطيات كلها وبعدين لما يشوف المجتمع انه ناجح النجاح هذا يولد فرص اكثر والمجتمع يثق فيه هذا اللي لازم نشتغل عليه هذا اللي لازم نشتغل عليه تعظيم الاستفاده تعظيم الاستفاده لا هذه بدايه في اشياء كثيره في مثلا البيئه في اشياء بيئيه اذا كانت شركه بيئه مثلا مهتمه بشيء فتجي يعني للمركز هذا وهكذا يعني افكار تولد افكار تطبيقات تولد تطبيقات questions at this end. Assalamu alaikum. Ishaq al-Musalhi from the Hayyal Amal Kahraba and Mia. Thank you, Doctor, for the presentation. Honestly, I have a problem. We are here in the middle of the year when we study the Magister. Even when we see the Doctor's doctor, there is a question of the research or the idea of the research. In the end, in the بعض المؤسسات والشركات عندهم مشاكل او عندهم مواضيع ممكن الشخص يبحث فيهم فلو وجد مثل تقول هاب ولا موقع في الانترنت كل مؤسسه تدرج في الانترنت يكون لها اكسس مع هذا الطلبه بيكون مفيد عندنا احنا في الهيئه سوينا الحين نسوي عندنا نورج مانجمنت استراتيجي وعندنا هذا الفكره وبدينا نطبقها ولاقت مصو نجاح الحمد لله لحد الحين شكرا اذا انت المشكله في يعني التواصل بالنسبه لك باحث كريسيرشر مكتبه مع مع جهات مع يعني أيوة. ما قادر تتواصل هي دكتور سيف اظن في منصه ايجاد الان بس ما لها علاقه يمكن لها علاقه بالنسبه هو التواصل بين ال الاندستري وانا اعتبرها ويمكن ما تكلمت كثير عنها اعتبرها هي الـ هي الـ الواعد او هي المحرك ما ابغى كلمه زي لكن هي الكور للابلايد ريسيرش هي منصه الان لكن فيها اشياء كثيره التواصل بين الاكاديمي والاكاديمي التواصل بين الاكاديمي وال القطاع الصناعي وايضا يمكن بين الريسيرشز والريسيرشز يعني في توبكس ممكن توصل لهم في حد يعطيك مثلا بحث معين اذا كان بالامكان. انصحك تتواصل مع الدكتور سليمان. سليمان. ان شاء الله ان شاء الله شكرا شكرا. دكتور سليمان صحيح. السلام عليكم. صالح اليحيائي معكم. اولا احنا شفنا انه السلطنه الحين تتوجه الى اعتماد تقليل الاعتماد على النفط والغاز. لكن اذا ببحث بسيط انا قريته ان نشوف ان كل دوله تعتمد على اربع قطاعات ومن ثم القطاعات الاخرى كلها تندرج تحتها الاقتصاد الوطني اقصد السياحه والتجاره والصناعه والزراعه احنا هنا مركزين على قطاع الخدمات في السلطنه وقطاع الصناعه اللي هو في النفط والغاز احنا لابد ان احنا نغير الاعتماد من النفط من النفط والغاز الى قطاعات اخرى 
احدى المشكلات اللي تواجه الاستثمار في السلطنه نعم هناك في تسهيلات هناك في فرص موجوده لكن المشاكل الموجوده هي الاجراءات المعقده اولا في اقتراح كان لمجلس الشورى انه يكون هناك في منصه واحده يعني تخليص الاجراءات للاستثمارات التجاريه والصناعيه او الزراعيه او السياحيه لكن للاسف هذا لم يتم تطبيقه تم تطبيقه في المملكه العربيه السعوديه وحتى في ايام الاجازه الاسبوعيه يتم افتتاح هذا المركز او هذه المنصه صراحه ما اذكر ايش اسمها بالضبط لها اسم مسمى معين لكن الاجراءات الموجوده الموظف هناك عنده خلفيه عن كافه الاجراءات اللي يعني من مختلف الجهات الحكوميه سواء مثلا تجاره او صناعه القوى العامله زراعه او غير كان ما لاحظوا هنا انه احنا لابد علينا من تطوير الاقتصاد الوطني سواء في التجاره والصناعه غير النفطيه طبعا عندنا مثال اللي هي تصنيع سياره نور مجان يعني الحين انا اتابع شخصيا صاحب هذه الشركه في عنده مشكله في ترخيص لمده خمس سنوات يعني هذا اعتقد مثال كافي انه يكون هناك في تعقيد في الاجراءات ولا بد من تسهيلها ما علي بس عن الاجراءات شيء ثاني احنا نتكلم عن ابحاث تطبيقيه وهل هي وهل النموذج هذا مناسب لعمان بالنسبه للاجراءات هذا شيء ثاني له تشريع أيوة. وله اشياء فاذا عندك سؤال محدد قول لو سمحت هو بس مجرد اللي هو اقتراح هناك في انت تتكلم عن الريسيرشرز لكن هذا صح من ضمن الاشياء اللي احنا بامكاننا نطور الاقتصاد عن طريق اللي هو الاعتماد على شركات النفط والغاز لان هي حاليا قادره يعني لديها ميزانيه كافيه ربما لكن احنا لابد علينا نعتمد عليها ليش احنا مثلا ما نطور الاستثمار في مجالات اخرى ما عن طريق هذه الشركات عن طريق تسهيل الاجراءات هذا ما قصده احنا نسهل الاجراءات تجي شركات عندنا اخرى يزيد الدخل الوطني ومن ثم الحكومه هي من تمسك يعني اللي هو جانب البحوث لما تمسك الحكومه جانب البحوث احنا بامكاننا ان نطور او نزيد عدد البحوث ولا نعتمد على الشركات فقط لان الفرصه لا لا ما مداخله لا هي فقط كمداخله لا لا انا هذا ما اقصده يعني شكرا شكرا لك شكرا مساء الخير لينا الحصين مركز الزبير المؤسسات الصغيرة شكرا this has been a very insightful lecture thank you for inviting me um, you've very rightly said that uh, we cannot wait uh, to build capacity yes. after or with education yes. and I would totally agree because we already have forces on the ground those are the SMEs and startups trying to create diversity in the economy as we speak what are your recommendations to along with this transition uh, start building the appropriate ecosystem for SMEs to be ready in due time to absorb this change and be ready to start businesses in this domain okay oh, oh, I'll tell you the truth so, uh, I'm a little bit confused with the number of, uh, not the SMEs, but those who provide the enablers, uh, Riada, etc. There's so many of them. At least what I'm proposing now is very disciplined, very controlled SMEs. These are, this is high technology. And there is a provider who will gain from it. As I said, it's a win-win for the entrepreneur and for the gas and petroleum and gas industry in the same time. They are improving their operation, they are reducing cost hopefully, environmental issues are taken care of, and so on. So this is more of a control, not control, but it is uh, in, in the right direction, I hope. Thank you very much, Matt. We will, I will take two more questions, uh, allow me, and then we will continue the discussions. Thank you, Doctor, for this um, uh, fruitful uh, presentation. Uh, I see the model is very uh, visible, um, but I have two points. The first point is um, I'm with you that uh, PDO can drive this uh, due to their diversity, uh, accumulative yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, experience and knowledge and so on, and that complement uh, Raoul uh, lecture. Uh, but we, ha we have to say, a PDO is um, 
uh, is going to take this because they change their identity from PDO to energy, which is ED EDO, EDO, as he said. Mm. Uh, and in order to bridge the gap with education, so the education system in Oman also has to change their identity. True. Today, in Oman, most of the academic institution, except Masqat University, mm. uh, they are focusing, <laughs> they are focusing in generating academics, which means how many numbers, how many graduates they have, and so on. But research is not priority number one on these academic institutions. So in order to make this model visible, I think um, an identity change needed within the academic institution. That's number one. And number two. And I agree. Thank you. And number two, um, that's both, I mean, let's say sectors are good enough to take it forward. But in order to make the synergy between these two, um, let's say, uh, sectors, I think there is a lot related to the processes, uh, legal system, uh, allocation and configuration of resources, and so on, which is today taken by the government. So how the government can support this too in okay. order to make your uh, model visible? Thank you. Uh, let's, let me give you an example to make life simple for you and me. Uh, innovation Park mascot. Let's say it, it will host this applied research, and I'm for it 100%. Who gave the land? It's in Sultan Qaboos University. Who is building now the Innovation Park mascot? It is the government. What is left? What is left are researchers working labs to be created, etc., And this is private participation. This is a good example where you don't want the government to put more money and say, okay, the, the private sector, and now I'm, I'm emphasizing the gas, petroleum and gas uh, sector, is to take this uh, to be the vehicle, and I'm saying PDO will, take the, will be the champion for that. Is it clear? For the legal things, you know, if, if you, you cannot put it within the government rules and regulations. So there are different paths to do this, options. I want to leave it at this, and maybe the debate is continuing between the research council, petroleum and gas sector, to find ways. Dr. Khattab, Jazakallah khair. It's a very inspiration talk. Thank you. Um, it's very mind-opening, and thanks to Muscat University for hosting the talk as well. It's not a question, but mudakhara, uh, but something you know to complement what Dr. Khattab is saying. Um, I'm Abdullah Abri. I'm from PDO, so I'm, I'm studying, you know, so that you could hear me better or you shoot me better. <laughs> Works both ways. But recently, Petroleum Development Oman, in collaboration with the Research Council. Um, has established something, you know, what's, what's been discussed previously, um, uh, EJAD. And EJAD is really focusing on closing the gap between the two entities, it's industry and academia. Uh, so the talks, you know, behind this, if I just may, you know, go back a little bit back in time, two years back we had, and every year we have this Oman Energy Forum where we discuss the challenges that are facing the industry. Uh, so in 2015, um, there was a discussion on where do we see Oman in 2040? So that's, you know, you know, after the, you know, the big shots were there from the government and from the, you know, academia and industry, it was a big discussion, so much good, so much fru fru fruitful, and the product was Oman Energy Master Plan 2040. It has some certain buckets that the government, the industry, and the academia should focus on so that we prepare Oman for 2040. It, it doesn't require so much of science, but, you know, what are the challenges? whether it's employment, skilling, some certain, the creation of certain ministries, like the Ministry of Energy, for example, and the transformation of the current strengths in Oman, like, for example, the petroleum industry, and PDO is the, uh, the top, uh, top notch of which. So those buckets, one of the main recommendations was to focus on R&D and innovation, so closing the gap. You know, Oman is, Oman is our innovative by definition, and I, I can say it, and you can quote me for this. You know, the ship makings, the sailings in the past, the diplomacy, for example, 
um, you know, the, the, the fortification. If you go to, for example, Tunisia for today, and you see the opera house just next door in here, the design is so much similar. The, the Nizwa fort was built 300 years ago. The opera was built recently, but the design is so much identical. You know, it's, it's better designing, better lightning, but the design is so much the same. Uh, if you compare, for example, the, the fortification in the same age, 300 years ago, when, when Nizwa University, or when, uh, when, uh, when Nizwa fort was built, with the Portuguese, for example, big difference. And I can show examples. I can show even Western journals talking about this. So I'm so much for it. I'm so much confident that the change is coming. So, you know, from 2015, the recommendation was to focus on Oman Energy Master Plan. A good bucket of it, uh, a major building block was to focus on R&D, which was thoroughly discussed in 2016. We produced Oman Energy Protocol. The energy protocol is kind of a framework that Dr. Khattab was talking, which is, should align all the efforts around the energy sector. So the protocol was initially founded by PDO, the Research Council, Ministry of Oil and Gas, but then it was later ratified by 35 stakeholders. So all the upstream, midstream, and downstream companies, they all signed, including Muscat Universities. So I'm complimenting you for that. Thank you. So now we close the gap between industry and academia. The point that was read by, by, raised by the brother the, over there is, you know, whether the researchers, for example, do not see or they, cannot, they don't have a platform where they can hunt for proposals or for challenges, now EJAD is there. Now EJAD is there, they can hunt, they can, you know, get some projects from there. So that's what I wanted to clarify, is just adding on what Dr. Khattab's point. So Thank this you. proves my point, that you should be the champion. <laughs> <laughs> One final comment from Sayyid Khalid. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency, uh, Dr. Khattab, for a wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, in fact, there were a few comments in my mind, but uh, our friends and uh, brothers and sisters here already mentioned some of them. But I will start from where Dr. Abdullah just uh, finished. I think Ijad seems to be uh, a practical model that was already existing that uh, answers a lot of the issues you have addressed uh, this afternoon. And uh, I think we have a good start that maybe we can repeat in, in other uh, areas of the economy. My uh, comment, uh, uh, small comment uh, to add here, is uh, about academia. I think uh, I fully support what uh, some of our friends said today, that the necessity of, uh, or the importance of academia in all of these uh, issues that you talked about, because you're talking about transformation to a knowledge-based economy. Yes. Knowledge, you know, without proper research, we will not get there, True. absolutely. True. And I don't only think it's to do with the research and the universities, but also the other uh, earlier uh, academic uh, process that we have in this country. Yeah. Even from the elementary stage going upwards, I think we need to have a new look at you know, what are the real challenges uh, from that stage. And I think to introduce knowledge uh, and research culture in our children is, is very, very important at early stages. One final note is that uh, I think Muscat University, uh, thanks to Professor Yusra and, and her colleagues, are pushing for a, a new program, uh, which is a DBA program, Doctorate of Business Administration, which I think could answer a lot of these uh, questions uh, when it comes to applied research and to field work uh, for specific industries. I think uh, we really hope and urge the Ministry of Higher Education to give us uh, the approval very soon for such program because we will be the first university in Oman to actually start a DBA program, which I think uh, if it gets inshallah, approved, uh, will definitely be the right form of uh, academic research that could specifically answers and addresses many of these issues that you talked about uh, today. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Just want to say about uh, Ijad. Ijad is a virtual till now. I, I know it has communication back and forth and the filling the gap between academia and researchers. After Ijad, and it will stay with the applied research, you need some physical things to go with it. 
you need somebody to evaluate proposals. You need somebody to evaluate patents. You want to do labs. You have, you have to have a central analytical lab that serves all researchers. You have very specific labs, a any lab, you know, re regarding the, any petroleum engineering uh, uh, topics. Uh, <coughs> so you need some labs as you grow. The IJAD will stay a platform. It will be, uh, a, a, you know, a communication between, between industry, et cetera. But there will, it will be followed, and I'm sure, sure Dr. Abdullah will agree, by some physical things. On, on For education, we are doing, and I don't want to put state council here, but we are doing a lot of, uh, prop, you know, reviews, studies, umuqtarah. So we have also provided the education council with a lot of uh, proposals, and they are working on it. So we starting from preschool all the way to the to the PhD level, Sean. Sorry, I, I've got a very small brief. Thank you very much. I think we, I, we still have three minutes, two minutes. <laughs> um, it's, it's just this confusion of we are diversifying from the oil and gas industry into other economies. So why are we still talking about the oil and gas? For us as a research council, for example, when we started developing commands research strategy, we said, what is it that we need to focus on? And we looked at examples from around the world. And um, in the US, for example, the defense industry um, spends 75% of the R&D. And that is used as the vehicle to spin off other technologies from. In Oman, if you look at the biggest research spenders, it's the oil and gas industry. Significant expenditure on research and development. And if I can give an example of how diversification and how the oil and gas industry can serve, you've all heard of Mira, which uh, His Excellency have presented, the Mira project. The Mira project, although it is supplying steam for enhanced oil recovery, but that steam which is injected in the ground could be put in a turbine to produce electricity. It could be put in a multi-stake flash chiller, uh, uh, multi-stake flash distiller to produce fresh water. It could be put into um, an absorption chiller to produce cooling effect. So this is a spin-off from that technology into needed industries, and industries could be created here in Oman, and thank God Glass Point is now um, almost uh, with significant shareholding from uh, the Omani uh, funds here. If you look at smart oil fields, and we are talking about smart cities, it's the same concept. Whatever you are using in the oil fields to make them highly productive could be easily transferred into smart cities project, into a smart health project. And this is why the oil and gas industry with its strength could be, is, is as His Excellency is saying, is the, the, the vehicle that can transport us and, and champion. And, and in a sense, with this strength, in human resources, in capacity, in technology, I think it should not be wasted, uh, and uh, an opportunity should not be wasted to help us in this transformation towards diversification of the economy from the oil and gas industry. Well said. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Very true. Very true. If you don't mind, Mr. Simon has been very, very patient. But it just Mr. Simon, and, and then I. And lucky. Okay, thank you very much. And as a member of my board of trustees, I feel I have to. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. <laughs> thank you, Your Excellency, for this pragmatic and realistic approach okay. to solving our problem. I've got a, a question and then observation. We cannot do transformation at this stage without PDO or without the oil and gas, but it does not have to be led by PDO. We have to analyze 
Why PDO or the oil sector is so successful? What are the elements necessary that made them successful? And I propose that the Supreme Council learn these lessons and use these resources because these guys have to produce oil, they are not free, and repeat the model and not take the lead. So the, the, the Supreme Council would define, as Mr. Raskalan was asking, would define the orientation. And we use the techniques, the knowledge, and the resources of PDO. It is just an idea. The other one is a question, and I don't have an answer for it, and probably uh, yourself also, because you, it's on behavior, to go back to behavior. I feel personally, and I've been here, as you know, 47 years. Yes. I want to ask this question. We are in Oman very conservative people. We are conformist. We talk the same, we salute the same, we behave the same, uh, and that's good. It's, it's, we're rich in tradition. Do you think, though, that being attached so much to our uh, heritage in terms of palm tree, in terms of honey, I'm naming research papers always, you know, on honey, and the, do you think that this extra conservatism is a hindrance to the imagination and to thinking out of the box and to opening up to critical thinking and therefore innovation? Thank you very much. The, the best answer to give you, I've, I've gone from north to south, east to west in Oman, and I visit a lot of schools. Yes, there is conservatism, and uh, but it is not to the limit that it will hinder any outside of the box thinking. I saw it in five years, 10 years, all kids, 12 and so on. We have created Young Explorer Program for University of Oman. And this may be new to some. We take students, male and female, after grade nine, and we put them on three years summer program. To make it brief, I attended those uh, uh, summer sessions, some of them. It was in the Sultan Qaboos University and Geotech. It was only four weeks. And I could see the development of the students, four weeks only. I could see talent, I could see intelligence, and it has nothing to do with conservatism or the culture that we have. It's like magic. Yeah. Yeah, but thank you. Just a little thing. Where did this idea come from? I was talking to a professor who is leading the executive program, CEO program, over a discussion. And, and he said, we, find, we found in all our candidates practically two gaps. Yes. One gap, that's his view, not mine. And you assured me that our traditions are not It has nothing excellent. to do with tradition. What, what the man said, he said, our candidates do not talk to numbers, and numbers do not talk to them. That was one observation. And the second one was, to my great surprise, he said our candidates cannot think out of the box for anything, you know, when it's, maybe he's exaggerating, I'm sure he's, uh, but we, you know, I mean, uh, and, to think uh, about it. It's a matter, I, I know the hindrance here, and I know the obstacles that go from one student, it, 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 it varies a lot. If you train him, if you ask something out of him to think, to analyze, this is not yet deep rooted in the education system. So you need to improve that part, you know, and then you will judge them. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're going to wrap up now. Um, I'm conscious, obviously, Maghreb is, uh, is nearly here, and we promised the 6.15 end, and we're just about there. I'd like to, um, on behalf of the board and my colleagues and, and guests here, thank you very much. Very insightful, very thought-provoking. For me, uh, an indicator of a successful lecture is the number and depth of questions you get. And I think, you know, um, absolutely the, the engagement with, with the audience has just demonstrated how um, interactive and, and how thought-provoking today's um, lecture was. So thank you very much. And I hope we continue to have those. Thank you for being here. I will ask, thank you. I will ask Dr. Jama on behalf of the Board of Trustees to uh, present a very small 
gift so that you can remember Maskat University.